Good afternoon, boys and girls. How you guys doing today? Today we're going to read a really great story about a little girl named Violet and her love for music, which I love music too. I'm not talented enough to play an instrument, but I love listening to it and I love singing it. Okay, and this story is realistic fiction. Say it with me, realistic fiction. A made up story that could happen. A made up story that could happen. It's a made up story, but it's about things that really could happen, but it really didn't happen because it's a fiction fake made up story. I can make up a story right now about me um, playing in the ocean and finding some uh, sea turtles but it's not really happening because i'm here reading the story to you all okay but it could happen but it's just not right now because it's a made-up story about stuff that really could happen so that's what violet's music is realistic fiction okay you guys ready to read it with me let's see if i can get my camera situated here children Violet's Music, written by Angela Johnson. As a college student, Angela Johnson used to babysit for Cynthia Rylance's son. One day, Angela showed the famous author a story she had written. Cynthia liked it so much that she helped get it published, and soon Angela became an author too. And meet the illustrator. Her name is Laura Huliska. Beef. I hope I pronounced that right. Sometimes you're gonna say words and you just have to sound them out sound them out the best way you can and sometimes names are some of those words. Laura Huliska Beef has had many jobs. She has been a paper carrier, a library aide, and a waitress. She almost became a bus driver. By far her favorite job is illustrating books. So this lady's had a lot of, she's done a lot of different things and she had to find out what she was good at and what she really loved. And I love her illustrations in this story. They're so cute. Violet's Music. When Violet was a baby, just a few hours old, she banged her rattle against the crib, hoping others in the nursery would join in. What do you think a nursery is? It's a room for little babies. Boom, shake. Beat, shake. All day long, Violet played that rattle. She loved that music even when she was a tiny little baby. Could she find other babies to play along? No, she couldn't. But she'd keep looking. Violet played her music all along. Look at all of her little rattles she's got making music. On Violet's second birthday, Aunt Bertha bought gifts and a full box of paper, <coughs> crayons, glitter, and glue to make horns that would well. Violet tooted from morning till that night. Wow! Woo woo! All day long. <coughs> she tried to get everyone to toot with her all day. Whoa, woo, woo. Oh, yeah. Violet blew that horn. Could she get her family to play with her? No, she couldn't. But she'd keep, but she'd keep on looking. Violet blew her horn all along. Violet wondered in kindergarten if there were other kids like her. Who dreamed music, thought music, all day long? Now she's old enough to go to school. But she found that some like to paint, some like to paste, others like to play in the sandbox, and still others just like to stand around eating paste. Everybody say, ill, ill. No one wanted to play music all day long. Oh, no, so she didn't even have any luck in kindergarten even. Oh, no. One day at the beach, Violet 
played with a badminton racket, a pretend guitar, hoping someone would join in. Plink, plink, pluck, pluck. Violet played the guitar. And look at all these words making sounds. What do we call that? Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. A word that makes a sound. A word that makes a sound. Could she find a fellow guitarist buried in the sand? No, she couldn't. But she'd keep looking. Violet played her guitar all alone. Poor Violet. With Violet, you see, it was music all the time. Breakfast time. Dinner time. Oh, she's making noises at the table with her fork and her glass. Bath time and all times in between. Whenever she walked down the street or hid behind the Marcus vegetable bins or sat on the fire escape, Violet was always looking for kids like her. Aww. Could she find them at the zoo? Nope. At the museum? Too quiet. Uh oh, I bet he didn't want her making music in there. And forget about the dentist. But she'd keep looking. Violet and her music, always looking. Until... One day, a few summers later, Violet was playing her guitar, a real one now, in the park. Twang, twang, yeah, yeah. Twang, twang, yeah. When over by the fountain, someone started beating a drum. <gasps> then, behind the jungle gym, a saxophone blew real smooth. Now, I love to hear saxophone music. I'm not going to lie. Some of my favorite. And over beside the flower garden, someone started to sing. Now, Angel, Randy, and Juan are in Violet's band. And if you ask any of them whether they thought they'd find each other, they'll say, oh, yeah, we did. We knew we would. Because when we were in the nursery, then we're two, and later in kindergarten and at the beach, we kept on looking for kids playing music too. Shake, twang, plink, pluck, wah, woo, yeah. And look, they made a band, and people were coming to see them with the band. So what lesson did you learn from this story? What should you do? If there's something you really, really like, um, should you give up on it or should you keep trying? What did Violet do? She kept trying, didn't she? Until she found the people that liked the same things that she did. Hope you like this story. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye.